from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods of moving and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the Smart Money Happy Hour, co-host with Rachel Cruz, is my co-host today here on The Ramsey Show. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. Liz starts off this hour in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Liz. How are you? I'm good, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Thanks for taking my call. So I am based in North Carolina, um, and I make $43,000 a year. I'm on baby step two, paying off debt. I just cut up my first credit card, which was a whirlwind, um, but got through that. And now I have $20,000 in debt and student loans to the government. And I had two questions kind of revolving that. One, should I wait to pay it off for, like, wait for it to get forgiven, or should I start paying it off now? And the second one kind of comes in with that. My dad passed a few years ago and left an inheritance. I have literally the exact change amount to pay that off. Um, I've been hesitant to do that because I kind of want to feel my own pain of my own stupid decision, but I also don't want to put that money towards my loans. I'd rather do something more important with it. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's my kind of question. Cool. Is that your only debt, $20,000 of student loans? Yes. I thought you said you cut up a credit card. No debt on it? Yes. Yeah, no, I always paid off my my limit, but George Kim will help me figure out. I I need need to cut it up. (laughs) I did. Look at that. Who knew, Dave? That's awesome to hear, Liz. So if this is the only debt, and you said the inheritance is to the penny the amount. Now, I don't know what your faith background is. You know, you can call it a coincidence, but that just seems pretty happenstance that the inheritance matches up to your debt. It is. And I, I've, I've thought a lot about it and it just, and my dad was very, like very uh, financially. Um, I mean, he came in, he came over from Venezuela and he um, had a very difficult life um, providing for himself and, and the family. So wow. he was on track, like trying to do, he, yeah. he didn't agree with Dave altogether, but I, I started on the Dave train a little while ago, but um, he really wanted me to own a home and really wanted me to get like financially um, supported, supporting myself. So I just, I don't know if I'm crazy for using that money or if I'm like, I I also don't want to not feel the pain of my own decision. Yeah. Um, uh, um, your dad, I'm going to guess was a person of great integrity. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, he was. And so you paying off a loan, that you signed your name to and borrowed, even if it later might be paid off by the government, is an act of integrity that I think he would be proud of. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, I, and I think, it's funny that and you I think, that if, if that, and I think if you used your inheritance for that, I don't think he would call you stupid, and neither would I. Um, and I don't think you have to get 30 lashes on your back just to prove that you learned a lesson. I, I think you've learned your lesson. <laughs> I hope you've learned your lesson. Are you going to go borrow money again? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. If no, you're, th- if you're no. through, then you're through, right? And so, you know, let's use this and get cleaned up and then build your emergency fund. And then let's start building wealth so that you can leave it uh, to your heirs and have the same kind of legacy that your dad had. No, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was at dinner with my family the other night, and I told them this plan of paying it off, and they all looked at me like I was crazy, and they they ripped me to shreds. And I said, no, but this is about integrity. So I I thank you for your advice. Yeah, yeah. I I, I just I think one of the things I always think about when someone asks me um, what they should do with an inheritance that they got is I always think about the person that left the inheritance and what would make them smile from heaven. And I don't think you paying off your debts now that you've learned your lesson and you living a financially responsible life going forward, regardless of if some half-butt family member ripped you to shreds or not, um, you know, uh, you just, you know, I'm just going to pay off a debt that I actually owe 
and not wait on uh, welfare. Mm. And um, I, I got a feeling your dad's smiling about that. Um, and so, uh, and here's the other thing. Five years from today, if you live forward, following the Ramsey process, continuing in the baby steps, you're going to have substantial money. And five years from today, are you going to look back if the debts are forgiven by uh, the government later? Are you going to look back and feel like you did something wrong? No, you're not. So you're not going to have regret long term from having done the right thing. Even if it, even if it has a little bit of pain to it and even if uh, stupid people disagree with you. Stupid people disagree with you all the time when it comes to money. That's why we call them stupid people. They don't get a vote. You're not taking a poll. And, and so you raised the question earlier, Liz, of uh, what if there's more important things I should be doing with this money? And I can think of nothing more important than setting yourself free financially from this yeah. debt that's been hanging over your neck. And if they forgive, if the Biden administration gets it through the courts and next week they come out and forgive it, which they're not going to. But I, I personally wouldn't have any regret because I signed up for this trip and I took the trip. Yeah. You know, this this decision is taking up too much mental space when yeah. it could be free right now. Too many calories. Brooke is in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Hi, Brooke. What's up? Hey, Dave. Hey, George. How are you guys? Better than we deserve. How can we help? So this is a money question, but it's mostly an emotional, psychological question, I think. Um, my husband and I want your advice on whether or not we should go home to visit family for Christmas this year. Uh, the backstory for that is that we live here in Mississippi, and both of our families live in the north. And every year it's our routine to stop in Ohio, go to New York, and come back because we're the only ones that live in the south. My husband is getting his Ph.D. in genetics at USM. Uh, I'm super proud of him about that. So, uh, And we have the only grandchild <laughs> on both sides of the family. Uh, so everyone very much wants to see us. Yeah, you, 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 you have a great steps. you have great bait. Come see us yeah, if you want to see the bait. grandchild. Mississippi. You come to Mississippi. <laughs> it's a Mississippi Christmas. Oh yeah, and she's she's the sweetest too. I love her. But anyway, um, so we've been working our baby steps, and it has been a bit of an uphill battle. With, you know, with my husband still in his um, PhD program. And I'm trying as best as I can to be a stay-at-home mom and uh, still bring in uh, the income that we need to do everything we need to do. But we've uh, paid off probably close to twenty thousand dollars in debt, and the last that we are uh, that we have left is about five thousand dollars left on a credit card. I would choose to spend this Christmas in Mississippi and invite everyone to come see you. And if they don't want to go, that was their choice, and you guys are going to have a great little Christmas. It's just one year. One year. And they can, they're more than welcome. We'd love to have them. Nobody's mad at anybody. It's, we just can't do it this year. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, by the way, when you go through your life, uh, it changes as to who visits who with the, with the different phases of your life. This is The Ramsey Show. I say it all the time. If you're a business owner and you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. And when markets are shifting, it's even more important. You've got to know where you stand so you make your next move the right move. And you don't have to be in the dark here. Over 31,000 businesses, including my team at Ramsey, know their numbers because they use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, planning, budgeting, and inventory so you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Having everything in one place has saved my team hours each week since we made the switch to NetSuite. NetSuite is a game changer. So head on over to netsuite.com slash Ramsey to get a product tour today. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
procrastinators, listen up. We're extending our Cyber Monday sale where you can get our best prices of the year on your favorite products. Uh, for this week only, you can get our best-selling books and tools as low as $5. Apparently, our marketing department did not get the uh, inflation memo because we have a deflation recession thing going on at RamseySolutions.com. Everything's down. That just makes no sense, but it is. That's what, well, I mean, we're trying to help people, all kidding aside. We're trying to sell stuff. So you can shop our quick reads like my latest quick read, which is called The Momentum Theorem or Dr. John Deloney's Redefining Anxiety. All of those are under $10. Most of the number one bestsellers are $10. The best-selling bundle we have, the starter special, is 77% off. It's got the stuff in it you need to start working on all this. And, of course, The Baby Steps Millionaires, my latest number one, is only $10. Uh, man, most of our books or ten dollars a piece. That's ten books for a hundred bucks. You really cannot beat this stuff. This is a season to share hope with other people. This is a way to do it. It's not condemning to give them a book on how to get their act together. You just say, hey, this helped me. I hope it'll help you. That's all you have to do. Instead of like, you know, here's a book on losing weight because you're fat. Don't Very do that. Different. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's not good. Cyber Monday sale uh, continues all week long at RamseySolutions.com. Remember, prices as low as five dollars. So, George, um, they're dropping like flies. Who is the uh, the Bitcoin boys? Oh my goodness! The Bitcoin the Bitcoin Bros are they're just they're just dying like. On the vine. I don't know what's happening. They're like the dinosaurs. It's We're going to look it's, back. It's almost like um, like they had a bad business model. Wait, you mean, you mean like fake it was, money? Fake money didn't work or something. Wow. You know, I'm gloating a little because I caught so much hell from you Bitcoin oh, yeah. bros for the last three years, five years on how stupid a boomer I am and how out of touch I am while I'm telling you to stay away from this crap. And now another one files bankruptcy just a few minutes ago, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had a... Block, uh, BlockFi? BlockFi. Crypto lender BlockFi yes. follows FTX into bankruptcy. And follows uh, four others that filed this week into bankruptcy. And so. it's because it was a house of cards. Zay, Zay, is, Zay is dropping like flies, man. Oh, man. It's not... It's not it's, uh, I, I doubt many of our listeners had their money tied up in this kind of crap because they actually listen to this show. Uh, so I hope no one out there listening was hurt by this situation because users are going to their accounts and it's zero. And they're not getting their money back in these situations. So it's it's a scary uh, environment if you did throw a bunch of money into crypto, which millions of people have. You remember the old uh, movie, It's a Wonderful Life? Oh, yeah. Had a run on the bank. Yeah. You go to get, get your money out and you can't get it out. The bank went broke. Who knew? It's a Wonderful Life. It's, it's a modern day tale. Yeah, I wonder if there's any little angels with their bells ringing on this one. I'm guessing not. It. I'm guessing there's some devils doing the dance with their pitchforks oh. instead. Uh, you got to wonder I'm, how many more. I'm kind of thinking there's down. not any angels involved in this. I no. could be wrong. I mean, the guy looks like Belushi in Animal House, so there's no way that he's an. Uh, uh, All that actually, Belushi in Animal House, as stoned as he was, looks better than this guy. So. Um, Wow. That's what happens you don't get out of the basement often enough for, for fresh air and a haircut. <laughs> oh, man. This is a house of cards, Dave, truthfully. I mean, the whole thing is just crumbling because they were all intertwined with each other, and it turns out uh, it was only worth what people were willing to pay for it based on hype instead of based on actual you know, revenues and profits, which is what the S&P 500 is based off of. Well, and to recoup, I mean, we're gloating and carrying on and poking fun at you people, but we gave you great intellectual and academic detail on why this was going to happen. I just truthfully did not think it would happen at this scale this soon. Even that caught me by surprise. I figured it was going to, you know, it would unravel. There'd be a few things drop here or there. And eventually the thing would stabilize and, you know, over a period of a decade, begin to get some actual credibility. I, I thought it would probably work its way through. I don't know if the whole thing makes it. It may, it may just completely Implode. cave in. I mean, the domino effect on this is because been the. Wild. Um, I mean, well, because here's the thing, Rabbi. This is an interesting lesson for everybody, not just Bitcoin, but about everything. Rabbi Lappin talks about this book. Our, our, our good friend, he's an Orthodox Jewish rabbi, best-selling book called "Thou Shall Prosper." In the book, he looks at uh, money for, through the Jewish lens, and he explains to us properly that money is not about math money is about trust money is spiritual and so that's why all kinds of weird things have been used as a medium of exchange throughout history 
whether it be a gold bar, wampum that we trade Long Island for, uh, furs in the Old West, pioneer days, you know, two beaver pelts. Why would you take a, a skinned beaver pelt? As payment for something because you trust you believe that other people will exchange that for uh, some biscuit dough and some hardtack right and so you know that you know you can use anything as a medium of exchange if you trust that it can be used to exchange goods in the Old Testament uh, one of the things that was used was oil Oil was used to keep the Holy of Holies, the lamps burning in the temple in the Holy of Holies, and oil was a symbol of God's Spirit. It was used to anoint kings. You see the prophets pouring oil over the top of the head of King David or King Saul, uh, anointing them king. Uh, and, and oil, because it was prized, then you could literally go into the marketplace in those days with a carafe of oil and do an exchange. And so when the Bible says in the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, it's an indication of wealth. Choice food and oil were indications of wealth because it was used for a medium of exchange. You can use, I don't know, textiles. You could use anything that another person would accept. And so it's about trust. It's a spiritual thing. Money is spiritual. And all money is spiritual. Uh, The dollar bill is no exception. It's not magical. The only reason the dollar bill is, is um, more is more believable, has more credibility, is because it's more widely accepted and has a longer track record. That's all. Yeah, and uh, you know, backed by the government, and so that that's where the regulation comes in. Versus uh, yeah, but you have to believe that that matters. We all are in agreement that this dollar is worth something. I, I just, I'm really the backing of the government doesn't even impress me anymore. It's just the idea that I know that I can take this and go buy uh, a steak with it. I can fill up my car with it. Well, I can't. I can put a few dollars. Almost. A few, I've put a little bit of stuff in my car, but a little bit of gas in my car. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, uh, and crypto never really had that. It doesn't have a track record. It wasn't volatile. It was too volatile. It was too narrowly accepted by a very narrow portion of the population. Um, and yet everyone attributed to it the same credibility, the same spiritual power that, say, the dollar or even the peso, or even the yen has, and it, it's not. It was not there. Yeah, it was a nuance within the economy. Even though it was massive, it was still a nuance within the world economy. It had not yet proven itself. No, it was a, 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 a an out of control, overgrown baby child, and now it's falling in. And everybody started treating it like it was a legitimate thing and, it, and they got their heads taken off well, we kept and, telling you don't do this and the fraudsters and the scammers started to realize we can make a quick buck by entering the space well you know why they entered the space we need that's also spiritual because who was playing in the space were people looking for quick easy money and people are looking for quick easy money are always easy prey mm. to the con artist and the, and the scammer and so you're most easily conned when you're afraid or when you're a greedy and um, if you're neither of those, it's very hard to con you. Yeah, you're not, and you don't you don't fall for it. But get rich quick, man. If you're in there going, I, I got, I, I, I'm cutting edge. I'm a I'm a Bitcoin bro, man. I'm the I'm the smartest guy on the planet, and I'm on TikTok, and that that proves it right there. Yep. And I'm all of this crap, and, and you're setting yourself up. Absolutely. Well, I just hope my next paycheck isn't in beaver pelts. I'm a little worried now, Dave, of what you're trying to get at here. Hmm. Dave's trying to go back to the old times. Hmm. Let's see if he'll take some textiles this month. Hmm. Oh, man. George, I'm going to leave it to break and go hunting. <laughs> that would not shock me, honestly. I'm Never killed a beaver. That's Where'd why you bought this property o- by the woods, Dave, so you can take a quick break. That's it. I can go down there and make a beaver pelt and pay George. Oh, That's what man. we'll do. Just go, um, get, you know, go down there to Next the... Next segment, um, I'm going to be Davy Crockett with this on my head, Dave. It's going to be great. <laughs> he did not wear a beaver pelt, George. You were, That was a coon skin cap. You are so lame. This is The Ramsey Show.
If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Sandy is with us in Cincinnati. Hi, Sandy. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So I am excited to get started on the Ramsey plan. Um, my daughter actually introduced me to it. She's 12. Um, but my concern is that I am in the middle of changing homes a lot. My, my life is turned upside down. And so, um, I'm getting divorced. How do you start a budget when you don't even know what the bills are going to be? Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm going to be moving in three months. I just, I'm not sure how to even get started because right now I have joint bank accounts mm -hmm. and then it's going to change to be mine. So I, I'm just curious as to any tips you have about that. Horrible time of year to be going through all that. I'm sorry. Well, it's actually a relief for me at this point, so. Okay. The divorce has been filed, is final, is what? So um, it's, we're, we're doing sort of an amicable divorce, so the agreement is being written up by the lawyer, but it'll basically, it, it should be final in the next two or three months. Okay. So, and we've already worked out most of the details with arbitration. Okay then you should be able to close your joint accounts today. Already? You should be able to if, you've, if you're in agreement on it. Well, I mean, it's like the final back and forth about it within the next two or three weeks. But, yeah, I would say probably in a month. Yeah. Um, so do not put any more money into a joint account. Your attorney should have told you that. Okay. Uh, well, I think my husband is keeping the house that we're in, and I'm moving out. And I think it was just because that's what we've always been doing. And I guess I know, but you're not married it. anymore soon. Okay. And um, w what we've run into in 30 years of doing what I do is that sometimes people get right to this point, and it suddenly is not amicable, and suddenly he takes all the money out of the account, and now you're really screwed. So you need to be able to manage December. And okay. you don't have any money. I do. I have a separate account. That's what um, I'm saying. Okay. That's what I said to okay. do. All right. So, All right. Good. But most of All our right. money so, is in the joint account. Okay. But, but we, need, we, need to, we need to bring the, the cash portion of this agreement to an end as soon as possible and disperse so that you can begin to set up that part. Now, here's the thing. Okay. You can do a budget this month for this month. It'll never be like this again. But for this month, you can say, for December, what are my expenses, and where's my income, and where's my cash going to go? And then for January, i got to move, or i got to get a different place, or i got to add deposits. It's going to be a different budget, right? Okay. And then February will be a different budget. But it always is different. You never do the same budget every month. Some of them are more similar than yours are going to be for the next few months. You're going to be vastly different every month for a while until it stabilizes, but you have to tell your money this month what to do before it leaves because you're in the middle of um, a, a hugely volatile crisis situation, and it will give you great peace if you take control of this one area of your life. 
Okay, well, we pay all of our bills, though, from the joint account, and it's, like, automatic. So, I, like, out of my personal account, I'm not paying any. Okay, so what is your budget for this month? Okay, given that the, okay. the this weird joint account situation that's in limbo is going to mm-hmm. take care of our bills, but you still have some things you have to do in December as a newly independent person, right? Okay. And you need to write out that budget. There's probably okay. not a lot to it, is what you're right. saying. There's not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, uh, but you need a game plan, all right? And, and it might be that I'm setting aside a pile of money because in January after Christmas, I got to move out and I need deposits, right? Right. I'm going to actually buy my house in cash. Wow. Yeah, I have an inheritance, so um, I'm I'm going to do that. And that's are you, are you renting in between, or are you jumping right no. into the home purchase? Jumping right in. Um, it's yeah, it's crazy, but um, I don't want to loan money at a high interest rate, and I've got the money in the inheritance, and I'm buying a reasonable house. You know, like two hundred sixty thousand. Um, How much is in your inheritance? Um, my portion will probably be about 300 plus. You don't have the money yet. Oh, I do. Yeah. You said you're, you, you, if you don't, if you have the money, you should know how much it is. Probably be. Well, cause I'm going to give some, I'm giving some to some other family members. So I have some, I have some choice in that. It was all left to me, but I'm going to give some to some other family members. Okay. So it's much larger so than that. So it's all but, your portion. Yeah. Yeah. And you have that already? Yes. Okay. So it's not probably be, it's up to you. And so how much is your inheritance that is in your account? Um uh, well, like 450,000. Okay. Cool. And, and so I, yeah, cuz that matters. Not, I mean, if I you got yeah, 200 262,000 and you're going to spend 260, that's a little less reasonable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, the other thing is that I'm not settling the estate. It's all mine. It's nearly settled until after the divorce. That way there's absolutely no way that he can get it. Is what my lawyer told me to do. So, like, we have all the papers ready to go, but So you don't have the 450. I do. <laughs> I mean, I, I have it. I could settle the estate today if I wanted to. But I'm choosing to wait until after the divorce so that there okay. is, it's cleaner. All right. But it's all in accounts, and it's there's no one else. It's not- I got you. Okay. okay. Well, the question was about starting the budget, starting this process, and budgeting is a habit. And so you're it's going to take, you know, on average, it takes 90 days to get a hang of this budget. And now is the best time to start when you're in this situation. You need to be paying attention to where every single dollar is going and protect it uh, because this marriage has become a financial transaction and you need to now stay protected. Yeah. And let's get the things unraveled as quickly as possible. Um you're not going to do this, but my advice to you would be to not buy a house right now. Uh, you're hell-bent on doing this, but Sandy, just in talking to you, you're chasing your tail through the whole conversation. I mean, one minute it's one thing, one minute it's another thing, one minute it's another thing. You don't, you know, you're, you're discombobulated all over the place, and you don't need to be buying a house when your head's in the space it's in right now. Uh, and it, it's normal transaction for us as we tell people if you go through in the middle of a major crisis where you're grieving something like this, I don't care if it's a relief, it's still a divorce, it's still one of the 10 things that'll put you in the hospital, it's still high stress, high anxiety situation, unbelievable levels of emotion and cortisol coursing through your body, and it affects your ability to make decisions. And just the conversation with you is discombobulated. And so I'm just telling you, if you're my little sister, I would love you and tell you not to buy a house right now. Just go, go, rent, rent. go rent something for six months and let the emotional dust settle. You will make different decisions. And, by the way, don't commit to giving any of this inheritance away for six months. Let the emotional dust settle. Um, y- y- there's all kinds of psychology behind you're about to make mistakes here. Um, and But you're going to do whatever because I can tell. I'm, we're not going to be able to stop you. But um, the way you do a budget is you do it for that month with what you have to work with. And then you do it for the next month with what you have to work with. And so you don't have to wait until everything stabilizes to start doing a budget. As a matter of fact, the only way it will stabilize is to do a budget this month and then do a budget next month 
and then do a budget next month, and then you're stabilizing what you can. Yeah, they're not static. It's, you know, December uh, has Christmas, and so that affects your budget for that month, and January is going to have its own expenses, and so you've got to be restarting this process. A lot of the line items will stay the same, but it will fluctuate, especially if you have a regular income. But- Slowing down on large giving decisions to relatives that were not in the will, slowing down on large purchase decisions like a home uh, in the middle of this much upheaval and volatility in your life is not fear, it is not weakness, it is wisdom. So what we are recommending here is wisdom. We're not calling you weak or inept. We're saying you just got T-boned and you're kind of dazed and you're walking around the intersection with, with little birds flying around your head in a cartoon. And you need to get where you can sit down on the curb for a minute and let your head clear before you start admitting fault in this accident. That's what the kind of crap we're dealing with here. It's trauma. This is The Ramsey Show. proven in a culture that is completely soft, coddled, raised by helicopter parents, enabled, that you can be offended by almost anything because you people are so wussified out there. I never dreamed, George, that you would actually post an Instagram about eating at home is cheaper than eating out and you would piss off half of the nation. You know, this How goes in the back world your th- is that controversial? You started the trend, Dave, because you've always said... I know, but how is it How is it that America is so completely wussified that the idea that you should not eat out if you're broke causes you to be angry and hate George? Unbelievable. In their defense, I have a punchable face. I understand. No. But not for that. Here's you might happened. get a punchable face for something else. Here's what happened. This is just pitiful. I did a, a, a talk. Dang, up. George, kick us while we're down. I do enjoy eating out even though I'm poor. You need to value your own time as if you're a king. It takes time to make your own food. You wussies. You unbelievable little children people. Unbelievable. I, lo- I would watch an entire show of just Dave doing impressions of the commenters. This is brilliant. Okay, I, I don't even read comments, but they told me they were vicious on your Instagram, so I pulled them up, and I am laughing my butt off at how pitiful you people are commenting on this. You are absolute morons. This is unbelievable. Here's what happened, Dave. We, Our social team took a 10-second clip from my talk at our smart conference event in Dallas about the cost of eating out, and we're trying to help people find margin in their budgets with inflation. So I'm just telling people, hey, eat at home. Eat at a new place called Mi Casa, and if you want to save some money. So, James, play the clip so that everyone understands why you are the most hated man in America. Who knew this is how I get canceled? The average cost of a meal right now is 13 bucks. Eating at home, four bucks. So when you eat out, here's the math, because I'm a nerd, you spent 325% more. Enjoy. That, that was the entire clip. And uh, it got 1.7 million views on TikTok, 300,000 views on Instagram, and most of those were like hate watches because they're angry. Now, I will say, Dave, there was one comment that was true. It is 225% more. It's 3.25 times more, but 225% more. So for the true nerds in the comments, I salute your extra math there. But for everyone else, they're going, what was this, the 1990s? You can't eat out for my Taco Bell cost $16. Uh, Guys, let me just tell you, it's a simple freaking formula. If you run a restaurant, you pay the food cost and you pay rent and you pay insurance, and you pay labor to cook the food hypothetically and deliver it to one of you people who have no idea that you can actually cook at home, apparently. It was shocking to your little systems that you might actually engage in labor in your own freaking kitchen other than your crop. 
Unbelievable, man. My favorite is people saying, well, Dave, I save so much time when I go to a re- Have you been to a restaurant? you got to drive there, number one. Well, and here's traffic. the thing. Oh, and I left Wait. out profit. Yep, and tip. And tip. Well, I, these people don't tip. <laughs> Clearly. Clearly. Oh. No, this is unbelievable. So here's the thing. I don't mind you eating at a restaurant. George doesn't mind you eating at a restaurant. But to say that it is punishment against your little soul that you shouldn't eat at a restaurant when you're freaking broke is so wussified, people. That's ridiculous. And, it, of course, it's cheaper to cook at home. Of course it's cheaper. Now, I don't know if it's $13 versus $4 or $130 versus 50 bucks. But 100% of you that can do any level of math have to know that it is cheaper to make the exact same meal at home than it is at any restaurant. You are paying for the entertainment value and the convenience of eating out. Those things are called luxuries, wimp. That's right. And regardless of the numbers, like you mentioned, Dave, it's about the ratios. And no matter where you look online and what numbers you pull up, eating out is going to cost three, four, five X what it costs. Sure it does. Now, here's the thing. These people don't understand, Dave. When I said it's $4 a meal, I'm not saying the meal for the entire family was $4. I'm talking about a it serving. It doesn't matter, George. They were arguing. They, they, the only reason they want to pick apart your math is because they didn't like your conclusion that their little butt should eat at home when they're poor. You know what it is? No one and taught when you're the kids not poor, how to you cook. Listen, I've been poor, and you know what we did? We ate at home. We weren't poor. We were broke. Poor is a mindset. That's right. Broke is I'm passing through. Okay? But if you're broke, you eat at home. Yeah. You eat at home. And you eat the same thing again tomorrow night because it's called leftovers. Ooh, gross. I can't stand leftovers. Me and Sharon Ramsey agree that we're big fans of leftovers. Oh, Sharon. Dave's God, not she it. won't quit. Wears me out with leftovers to this day because she remembers being broke. Well, yeah, this is not going to waste. And there's stuff in our refrigerator is 83 years old. I mean, it's God Almighty. And we can afford to eat out. Okay. Yes. Going to a nice steakhouse tonight. Thank you, Jesus. All right? And I want you to go out to eat. I'm a big fan of restaurants. I like restaurant people. I like eating out. But it is entertainment and convenience. It is not economics. A necessity for ever. survival. Ever. You never eat out based on economics. Ever. And it is not an entitlement, you wimp. I, 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 my time, I'm going to treat myself like a king. Oh, kiss my butt. That is the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. Treat my, that's saying you sound like you're four years old. I mean, what is your, your emotional maturity level? There's no to age limit like for that? Instagram, Dave. Kick you could us, be four. Kick us while we're down. What kind of crap is that? kick you while you're down. What we're trying to do is keep you from staying down because you keep making stupid butt decisions. And that's offensive, Dave. It's offensive to do be mature. It's offensive to actually have a longer mentality on things. Ugh. It's like, God, I keep I keep looking at these. They just make me matter and matter and matter. The hour I spent co- cooking is sometimes worth the cost difference. There well, we go. It is, if you can afford it. it it's No one disputes that. The problem is people are saying, Dave, I'm living The beauty of me paycheck. going out to eat tonight is Sharon don't get any leftovers to add to the refrigerator. She might There's take some There's an added home. benefit, but that's not an economic thing. That's a Dave don't want any more leftovers thing, okay? That's all that is. You know, oh, my God, this can't be current. We've done the math as well. Oh, you idiot. Of course it's current. It depends on which meal set you're looking at and what you actually bought and where you bought. If you're buying organic eggs from a house chicken at – stinking that was you know it's not even a real chicken and you're buying it at whole whole paycheck at whole foods instead of going down the regular grocery store and getting regular cheap eggs you know you could pay 18 dollars for a dadgum thing of eggs or you can pay a whole lot less for a thing of eggs i mean a dozen eggs this is nuts it's insane and so nuts. yes where you shop matters we talked about that in the talk at smart conference Go shop at Aldi and buy it in bulk at Costco, and you can save big per serving. And people are saying, you can't get out of there for le-. Yes, you might spend 200 bucks at Costco, but hopefully oh, that God. feeds you for two weeks. Listen, off if of you want to rationalize and justify anything you can, that's fine. But there's no possible thing you come off as, as except inept and immature when you start saying that, A, eating out is your right. And it's your life. It's in the Constitution. Is, your I life think. is damaged. Kick us while we're down. Oh my God. Yeah, I'll kick you while you're down. Don't go on vacation if you're broke people. <gasps> Don't do it. 
I made a woman on the Today Show that I was coaching cry on national television because she went on vacation in the middle of me coaching her. And I'm like, that's the dumbest dadgum thing I ever wow. heard. Have you lost your mind? I told you not to do that. And she starts crying, and I got trashed because I jumped her case about dadgum being stupid. Here's the next one you're going to get, Dave. Dave, going on vacation is cheaper than my rent, so I'm just going to go on vacation. It's cheaper. It makes about as much sense as this stupid argument does. Yeah. And, oh, it's, and, and by God, it's my right. You can't just work all the time. Of course you have to take time off. You work all the time when you're broke. That's what you do. That's how you not be broke anymore. My grandmother used to say there's a great place to go when you're broke. To work. You work. That's how you fix the, that's how you fix the broke problem. That's Money comes from like no work. You work. That's what you do. Is it, is it oh, a way of life goodness. throughout your whole life? No. But you little wussy, you go to work. That's how you fix this. You don't go out to eat. And you don't go on vacation. You're broke. It's not a human right. Dave, Good I think it's time God, for you to, we're spoiled Y'all rotten. are going to make Dave jump into my comment section. We this are, is a dangerous no, time I'm to not be alive. In, I, I am not joining... The, listen, comments you are proof. A clown, if you read circus. comments on anything, you know why some species kill their young. I mean, it's unbelievable. Wow. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods of moving and storage studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, the most hated man in the restaurant industry, is my co-host today. It's an honor. Uh, that and, uh, and and by the horse people, too. You, just, oh, gosh, you know, I forgot you know, about that. Actual contingencies of people that hate you. It's awesome. I'm so glad that you're moving things around and causing some friction. It's good to have Stirring you as my co-host ruckus. today. Yeah. So if you don't know, he posted a thing on Instagram that it's cheaper to eat at home than it is cooking your own food than it is to eat out. And apparently this is a revelation to people in America. So uh, we've had a lot of fun making fun of you people that uh, have uh, argued with George. Common sense is offensive these days. It's so rare, it's like having a superpower. Abigail's with us. Abigail's in Nashville. Hi, Abigail. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, George. It's good to talk to you. You, you too. What's up? Um, so my husband and I are on baby step number six, and we're curious if we should use our savings to pay off our house, either now or in the near future. Why would you so, not? Um, <laughs> Well, um, that is baby step six. <laughs> yes. No, my, um, we've been unemployed since, since September. My husband just accepted a job and we'll start next week. Yay. At a, yeah. At a lower income as we had before, but mm-hmm. then I'm also eight months, eight months pregnant. Phenomenal. So I must I assume <laughs> when you say you're taking out savings, you still have an emergency fund after you pay off your house, right? Um, I think so. So we, we have about, 175 saved right now in various money market, mm-hmm. venture funds, stocks, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and we owe 148000 So That would be like 50000 bucks left. Oh, no, 25000 bucks left over. Right. So For that would emergency. kind of be our, our emergency fund. Yeah, what's your household so income? Then, um, so with this new job, mm-hmm. it would be 40000 a year. Oh, yeah. Pay off your house tomorrow. Really? Why would well, you wait? Should we do it? Why would you wait? Well, I mean, do, do what we do you wait, wait until on? after the baby? Well, baby, what if? Well, the baby's not going to affect. I mean, babies don't cause foreclosures. No, well, that's true. You have health insurance, okay. and you have your emergency fund. You have twenty-five thousand yeah. dollars. You have health insurance. Your husband has a job, and you have a paid-for house. I can't think of a better thing for a baby to come home to. <laughs> okay. What's your mortgage payment? Um. So our mortgage right now is about thirteen hundred. 
Yeah. Under what so, circumstances do you need $150,000 for your baby? No, we don't. But um, part of that was the severance package. So no, but under what circumstances job. would you need $150,000 due to the fact you're having a baby next month? We wouldn't need that much. I can't think of one. That's what I'm saying. Right. So, yeah. but, and, and you just, said, you said, yeah, but baby, do I wait until the baby comes? Well, no, it doesn't have anything to do with it. And you've increased oh, yeah. your cash flow next month because you don't have principal and interest to pay. That's true. So we're just um, under our current insurance plan. I think we have like seventeen thousand in our deductible. So if the baby had a NICU stay, we'd still need quite a bit of cash. But that's just like the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not the end of the world to wait um, uh, until after baby comes if you want to. But the point okay. being that um, you know we're. I, I don't want you sitting around figuring out a way to rationalize that you keep this money because it makes you feel safe because paying off a home is going to make you feel safer. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if yeah. you hate being debt free, you can always go get a mortgage layer. <laughs> no, I think we would enjoy it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if you want to, yeah. when's baby due? Um, January. Okay. Any indications that there's any issues? No. Good. Well, congratulations. That's wonderful. An exciting time. Yeah. So new what job, we're talking about here is, is the difference in four weeks or five weeks. Well, yeah, it's not that yeah. long. Pay off your house or now or pay it off if the baby comes. I don't care at the end of the world. Okay. But what I, what I do want to challenge and what I was doing is to ch just challenge your critical thinking on it because mm -hmm. what happens is um, most people, me included, because babies are so cool um, and they scare you. Uh, when they mm -hmm. come, because it's a whole new set of responsibilities, even if it's the second or third one, it's that much more responsibility. And so, you know, they're they're looking at you going, I just cost a lot of money, you know. And so, <laughs> so right. I mean, I, I, you know, I've been through that myself as a, as a, as a dad and then as a granddad. So I get all of that. But what that is, is thinking with emotion rather than the actual math. Mm -hmm. And that, so that's why I'm pushing back is I just want you to think, you know, critically thinking there's a 1% chance that paying off your house is a problem here. and But right. if on that 1%, if it just makes you feel better, wait till your baby comes home and then pay off the house. But don't, do not get to the end of February with a mortgage. Okay. Under any circumstances, unless unless baby has serious problems and you're in, like you said, some kind of NICU stay or something. Yeah. But um, just don't, 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 don't figure out another reason to kick the can down the road that's emotional and not logical. So... There's always a what if out there. But. Well, yeah, but I mean, the other thing is most of them end better with a paid for house. I mean, what if? What if he loses the new job? Well, paid for house. What if? What if? What if? What if? What, what if, if we don't have a mortgage payment next month? That's yeah, fine. There you go. Brady's in St. Louis. Hey, Brady, what's up? Hey, guys. How you doing? Great. How can we help? Hey, so I've got a couple of questions for you all. I, uh, I'm 21 years old, and I, uh, I'm in college. I'm about to graduate here in May. Good I've for actually you. Signed, thank you, sir. I've actually signed to uh, start a position already. So Great. Kind of What's your degree in? Me. Uh, it's going to be in computer science with a concentration in software engineering. Wonderful. Um, well done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I, uh, I'm going to be um, working at Boeing in St. Louis as a software engineer. So I'm super excited about that. But... My, I guess my general question is, is how can I set myself up? And I, I have a fiance now. We're getting married end of next year in September. How can I set myself up, my kids up, my fiance, the whole family, where we can be successful month to month and successful for retirement and live comfortably? What are you going to be making? Uh, I'll be at eighty-two thousand starting salary, and I'll have a eight thousand signing bonus in May. And this awesome. is kids. This is future kids. Your fiance doesn't already have kids. You don't already have kids. Exactly. Yes, okay. Sir. Thinking ahead. So, do you have any debt? Uh, I have. Uh, I have no student loans graduating, but I have about twenty thousand dollars in car loan. Okay. Well, your A one would be to pay that off uh, when you get out. Do you have any money saved up? Uh, I have about two thousand dollars saved up now. Yeah. We'll get okay. graduated, get married, get the job, get the car paid off. That's thing one. Your most powerful wealth building tool is your income. And if you quit giving it to other people, it sets you up, right? Okay. Yes, sir. So the best thing you can do is get out of debt, stay out of debt, have a pile of money in the bank, be investing for the future, 
pay off your house once you get that as soon as you can and man that is the way to set up your family's future and you're going to get there in no time at 21 making the money you're making it's only going up from here if you follow the steps the baby steps we teach you'll be there in no time i'm going to gift you financial peace university to help kickstart this journey for you so hang on the line austin will pick up we're going to gift you that watch all nine lessons with your fiance as a premarital counseling it'll change everything man i'm telling you oh every young couple getting married ought to do that wow this is the ramsey show And I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information. season where our brains are focused on buying presents, decorating our homes, and all the Christmas New Year celebrations, and then all of a sudden, January's here. And some people hit January with what's known as a financial hangover. Well, we have the antidote for the keeping you from doing that, um, and it's called Get Signed Up for Building Wealth Live. We're going to be doing it here in Nashville, January the 12th. This one-night event will help you kick off 2023 feeling confident about your finances. Rachel Cruz, George Camel, Ken Coleman, me, Dr. John Deloney, join us as we walk you through a simple but proven plan to get back on track and build wealth. Yes, it is possible. Our Building Wealth events have been a huge hit, and we just wrapped up our sold-out fall season. It's a lot of fun, and our January event will be here in the Ramsey headquarters, but we're also headed to Indianapolis, Austin, Salt Lake City, and Anaheim, all the dates in the spring. Uh, they're selling very, very rapidly. Passes are only $39 to come to these events. Building Wealth Live. Get your tickets to Nashville today at RamseySolutions.com slash events. RamseySolutions.com slash events. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means even if you mismeasure or you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. Free samples, free shipping, and new promos all the time. You'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Claire in Vermont. She asks, does contribution toward teacher pension count in the 15% investing in retirement? Or should 15% be invested and then the pension contribution be extra on top of that? I'm asking for my mother-in-law, who is 63. She started an IRA outside of the pension, but that's been started pretty recently. All right, so a lot of numbers got thrown around there with pension. But what she's asking is, you know, if the company is paying into the pension, not the person, how does that affect this uh, baby step four, 15%? doesn't at all. If, you, if the company is paying in, if you have a pension that you are required, that's mandatory for you to put money in and you're putting in 15 percent, there's two problems uh, with that. Three problems with that. One is you have no control of it. It's not an asset of yours. It's an asset of the company. If the company goes broke, the pension goes with it. So if uh, you work for XYZ company that just filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy because they were into Bitcoin or something, then you would have zero pension. 
because your pension goes broke when the company goes broke. The, the second problem with the pension is um, you don't have control over what it is invested in, and so it doesn't produce as much income later. Uh, and, of course, the third problem is it dies when you die. So uh, you lose it. It's gone. Poof. Just like smoke. And so... All, all of that to say, if you are putting 15% in, it's not as good as you putting 15% in the other, but we'll count it. I would count it something if I were in your shoes, I'd maybe half or something like that. That's what we usually say. Yeah. So let's, uh, for an example, if you have to put in 12%, it's mandatory. We would count that at about 6%, half, because of the poor performance, because you have no control. So if you have that six, you'd still put another nine to get to 15% baby step four. Great question. Mary's in Boise, Idaho. Hi, Mary. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, I, have a, I have a question about um, gift giving and gift receiving at the holidays. Um, my husband and I are, we don't have any debt other than like no credit card debt, no student loan debt. Um, we do have some automobile debt in our home, of course. So we're rapidly paying those off. And every year we tell our siblings, I have three siblings. My husband has two. We have a total of 11 nieces and nephews, plus our parents. We just say, no gifts. We just want to see you. We just want to hang out. And every year we find out everybody's getting us gifts. And then last excuse me, last minute, we all, we decide to buy them something. But it doesn't feel like it's coming from the heart. So I guess my question is, is it cheap of us to know that we're going to be receiving gifts and not give gifts because we're focusing on ourselves? Or is this the time when we just put our financial goals aside so that we can gift people with something. Hmm. I don't think you're cheap. cheap. I I personally don't think you're cheap. I think forced generosity where I'm, I'm giving you something and I'm expecting something in return. That is not the spirit of giving to begin with. Uh, So if you've had Mm -hmm. that conversation and they are resentful of you, then you can't carry that. Mm -hmm. That's not on I don't, you. I don't feel like there's resentment there. It's, it's guilt just on your too end. Bad. We're gonna we're gonna give you something anyway. So then, so it's just it's, I guess it's just in between our ears where we feel like we're being cheap by not getting everybody something. Yeah. But I mean, if you do well, the math. Let me, you know, let me just eleven. Regard, you, you can do whatever you want to do. Obviously, any family can do whatever mm-hmm. they want to do. Um, our families years ago, when Sharon and I went broke, we sat down with all of her brothers and sisters, there's 13 grandkids on that side um, and uh, five brothers and sisters and spouses, right? So Mm -hmm. there's 20-something people involved Yeah. uh, and going into Christmas at her folks as an example, all right? And we had to sit down with them and we said, guys, we're really sorry. Um, We cannot afford to buy everybody a gift. And so we're begging you guys to join us in this it's kind of gotten ridiculous anyway and let's Mm -hmm. let the the adults draw names and each one buy one a gift and and little kids that are under whatever 10 or something get gifts and the rest of them are in the drawing you know um or or whatever thing and would you all join us in this because we don't want to come in here and feel guilty and if y'all are all going to give each other gifts and we're going to be sitting here feeling guilty we're not going to be able to come because we don't want to sit here in that Mm. okay and you know what? They went, thank God, somebody said it out loud. We always were thinking the same thing. They weren't even broke, and they were just glad to draw names because it gets just dumb anyway, right? I mean, you're buying somebody, you see something, you see four or five times a year a gift, and they've already mm-hmm. bought anything they really wanted, and so it goes in a exactly. drawer or it's thrown away or it ends up in the seldom-used kitchen items bin or whatever it is, you know? And so it's, it's, it starts to be silly, really yeah in in most families now some families are unbelievably into it and whatever that's fine but uh i I would just have a conversation please don't put us in this position and well and then i guess my next question is when you get to the step of give wealth and get uh you know gain wealth and give or um I'm messing well, it up. listen, we're, um, we're extremely wealthy, and our kids, the Ramsey kids, got together at Thanksgiving and drew names. As a matter of fact, there's an app that oh. you can use to draw names. Okay. I found that out at the Thanksgiving table this year. There's an app for that. Of course. Rachel knows there's an app for drawing names, mm-hmm. right? And I think it's more fun anyways that way. And yeah. then no one's going, well, he got three gifts, and I got two, and his were worth more. than." And it just becomes a weird spirit to the whole but, thing. I mean, our kids can afford yeah. to give each other anything they want to give them, and we can afford to give them anything we want to give them. It's ridiculous. And we don't. 
We don't. I mean, we we just we give we we drew names and we're going to do that. And you know, now Mimi's well, think, gonna... you know our philosophy is you know just spending time with each other. That's yeah. all the gifts we want. Even if we were millionaires, it's like I just want to. Well, spend that, that's time the with point. You. That's the point. Yeah. And so we do yeah. one gift in the spirit of gift giving for adults, okay. and all the little kids get gifts. And it's fun to watch the little seven year olds get gifts. That's fine. That usually doesn't kill you. But it's just the. The, the, the big thing here is the manipulation of the relationship process to where the, you, you ask them not to put you into this position. And you'll probably find that somebody will go along. And you may have to kind of draw a line and go, you know, we're just not going to be able to be here if you're going to put us in this position because we just don't think that way. And, you know, we'll get with you another time. And uh, we're not going to sit here and watch all y'all open gifts and we didn't buy them. That's just That's weird. Awkward. That's awkward as crud. That's just weird. I don't want to be, I'm, I don't want to be guilt tripped intentionally or unintentionally or in my own ear, between my own ears or whatever. It's, it's a difficult time. You know, the beauty, Georgia, of this time of year is you get to see your family. The, the bad thing is you get to see your family. <laughs> Both and. That's t- I mean, our cousins sit around. We're adults now, and we just give each other a $25 gift card, and I get a $25 gift card. I mean, the card dirty and- Santa stuff is a lot more fun. Yes, the gag gifts, have yeah, fun with it, steal from each other. That's a lot more fun. Set a gift limit. I think that should be the new trend this Christmas. Just tear into it. Absolutely. You know, I mean, oh my gosh. <laughs> Which, by the way, Dave, I still have to buy you a gift, and I expect one in return. George, the chance of me feeling guilty about this is really zero. close to zero. Maybe negative amounts of I'm guilt. Thinking, I'm thinking beaver pelt. Thank you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Back to the beaver pelt. Here we go. <laughs> you can make a hat out of it, George. This is the Ramsey Show. is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. personality, host of Smart Money Happy Hour, at least co-host with Rachel Cruz, is my co-host here today on The Ramsey Show. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, David and Jessica are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, Good. Dave. Welcome. Happy to be here. Where do you guys live? Just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, cool. Well, welcome. Glad to have you in Nashville. So here to do a debt-free scream, how much did you pay off? Uh, about 120000 All right. How long did that take? 22 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that two years? Uh, about 110 to 150 Cool. What do you all do for a living? I'm a commercial truck driver. Mm-hmm. And I'm a, f- a supervisor for pharmacy operations. Awesome. Good. And what kind of debt was this 120000 Everything. Everything. <laughs> Everything. Credit cards, student loans, uh, cars. Medical bills. Medical bills, personal loans, all of it. You guys were like normal. Super normal. Super normal. And normal sucks. Oh, so uh, how long y'all been married? All of the years. The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> how long you been married? Five years. Uh, five years. Five. Okay. And out of the five years, about two years ago, something happened and gave you a wake-up call. Tell us what happened and how would you get started on this Ramsey stuff? Well, going back um, a couple years before that, um, 2015, uh, she was coming out of a uh, – a very toxic marriage. Um, I was coming out of prison. Um, did a couple of years in Indiana mm-hmm. for uh, drug addiction related stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were both kind of starting over. We'd known each other since high school, mm-hmm. but we kind of off and on stayed connected. So mm-hmm. kind of came back together. And um, after we got married in 2016, um, we didn't really know what to do. We were living with family. 
talking to bankers, talking to people that knew their stuff. Uh, everybody was telling us, buy a house, do this, got to build your credit, get credit cards. So that's what we did. Um, they never said 17 credit cards was too many. They just said, get credit cards. Um, they never gave me a number. Exactly. They never said stop. They just said to do it. So we did, and we did it a lot. And um, so then um, 2019, um, we had bought a house. We, we really should have been able to afford it, but we were so swamped in every other area that we ended up selling that. Mm-hmm. Moved back in with family. Um, mm-hmm. And then we just found ourselves really, really broke and uh, trying to figure out where to go from there. And we found you. Yeah. This new life was supposed to be fun. <laughs> it's That's supposed right. to be. That's and right. it didn't, ha- didn't turn out that way. So you bumped into us where? Um, that would be me. Um, I worked with a guy for a while. Uh, I wouldn't even call us friends. We were just buddies at work. Um, and I remembered we had an open enrollment. He had mentioned he didn't need any of the – or do any of the benefits at work. He used Xander. And I said, what's Xander? And he said, uh, the Dave Ramsey uh, stuff. And I said, what's that? He said, the financial guy. Two and a half years later, uh, Tyler Hardesty, if you ever watch this, two and a half years later, don't know why it triggered in my mind, but hmm. – Jump back into it. There it was. Okay. So mm-hmm. you just Google it and find us, yeah, and here just, we go. Yeah, just huh? dove in, found you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, congratulations. I'm proud of you. You went, I trusted bankers long enough. Let me trust this Dave Ramsey guy and see what he has to say. After watching it for a little while, he seemed like he knew what he was talking about. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so how how much of a turnaround? Was it instant where you just went, and I'm going to cut up all 17 cards? What was this process like to get started? Kicking and screaming. So was that on your end? That was on my part. I was very, very reluctant. Um, I had been in a toxic marriage, and I said, you know, from that point forward, I'm going to be independently broke. I am not going to be codependent on anyone else uh, for financial anything. So you said so, this was a control thing. You're like, no one's going to tell me how I'm going to live my financial life. Yep. Um, and, you know, I thought this is just a fad. He's going to lose interest in this. Um, and then he introduced introduced us to our ELP, Tracy. Hi, Tracy, um, who's been our biggest supporter um, keeping us on track. But uh, she'll, that very first meeting, she'll tell you, I was like, I don't want to do this. I am not excited about this. This is not how I wanted to live my life. Um, but here we are. They never said a good attitude was required. Okay. <laughs> That's amazing. But you started doing this stuff. And you went, oh, my gosh, this actually works. At what point did you flip? Um, from being heels dug in to running forward? So there were two. Um, I actually started getting really into uh, the Ken Coleman show um, and had some questions about my career. Um, He gave me some really great advice, put myself in proximity of the people who could make things happen, got two promotions within six months. Um, But really, uh, I would say what solidified it for me is, I don't know if you remember, but uh, we very publicly had a hiccup in our financial peace journey in February. Um, So about nine days before uh, my son was born, uh, I went out and bought a van. Yep, that's us. So we bought a... I, I called you about I, that. Oh, I have no idea. He, he you're, you're the only one in 30 years that's ever done that. No, I have no idea what you're talking no, about. He called in February and gave his side of the story, and I oh, think you no. asked if I lost my dad gum mind. <laughs> when <laughs> I remember said this call it was now. Fear, and then I wrote an email the next day, which I didn't expect to get a response, but you um, responded, and I think you called him a twerp. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I think George called us both grown children. <laughs> he did, he did. It's all mm-hmm. coming back. Um, well, you guys, people. I don't remember this, but you're legendary, <laughs> apparently. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Okay. I wanted a it's, response. Yeah, it's funny that you talk about the YouTube comments because they were not friendly at all. But um, for that, for me, that was the changing point. You had said there was some fear there. You had said that we needed to recommit to our why. You even suggested him coming off the road. And so we sat down, we had a meeting, and we said, this is our why. This is what we want to do, and we're going to do it. And we actually, I think it was May 2023 was our projected date, and we hit it this November. Wow. So what yeah. turned them around? They go into the Ramsey Woodshed. They get beat up by you, <laughs> me, and the YouTubers, the YouTube comments. They get just destroyed, and then they go, okay, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> it was well-deserved. Who knew that could be inspiring? <laughs> wow. We still have the van, by the way. It's we kept right it. out we there. Kept it. yeah. <laughs> and it's paid off. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, well, so what's proud sped up of the you journey? guys. Well done. You Very went from cool. May 2023, but you did it months and months earlier. What happened? I, I think it's fair to say before the van, which was just kind of a catalyst for us communicating even deeper, we were most, well, not most, but sort of Dave-ish. There was, there was some things we should have cut out uh, of the budget and things we could have done a little more intensely. And after that, it, it just 
the intensity. You just, just leaned into up. it we when cut, you realized we it worked. We cut all the nonsense completely out of the budget. We went a couple months, uh, no plastic at all, all cash, all envelopes. You get, um, you get called out on national radio, it'll do that to you. Oh, my yeah. God. Wake you up a little he, bit. He can't hear me, right? Because once we gave up the restaurant budget, um, that's when things like really like knocked it it's out of the park. Um, was was not, not eating out. Eating at home is cheaper, Dave. <laughs> George, <laughs> see, uh, one more time. There it is. Oh, my gosh. You guys are amazing. I'm so proud of you. Thank well you. Well done. I'm sorry we took you to the woodshed, but I'm glad it worked out. <laughs> I'm glad it worked out. Uh, we, we did it in love. We love you. We wanted you to win, and we're glad you're winning. That's awesome. It was, it was a good needed motivation at the time. Wow. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is now that you've done it? Everybody says the budget because you have to to look at your numbers if if you're not you just you don't even know what you're looking at or what you're talking about um so that is a have to being on the same page mm-hmm. uh, communication mm-hmm. i know she would say having grace mm-hmm. it is it is and that's part of why we're here is because you know we had a hiccup we had a really big setback i bought a van when we were five thousand from paying off the car that we had um and so having grace and understanding that you're gonna mess up or you're gonna make mistakes throughout the journey but it's not a reason to quit wow that's good i like it good for y'all well done well done. Hey, we've got a copy of the the uh, Live and Give box for you, the bundle, and that includes the Total Money Makeover book, the Baby Steps Millionaire's book, and a one-year membership to Financial Peace University. Use those things yourself or give them away to other people. Enjoy them. And uh, we're so honored to have you here. I'm glad that we get to hear the other side of a woodshed story. It's the where are they now. Yeah, They're dead free uh, now. That's, that's cool. what's up. I have no recollection of this because I've done that stuff so many times in 30 years, but I'm so happy. It's only been that 5, thousand calls since then so happy well i mean i'm i'm you know, i'm just i can't remember my name but anyway well done y'all very 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 proud of you good work and you brought the kiddos what are their names and ages uh this is walker he's mm-hmm. nine months mm-hmm. and wyatt is 29 months. all right cool all right 120,000 paid off in 22 months making 110 to 150 plus or minus a van count it down let's hear a debt-free scream three, three two, two one, one. we're, we're debt-free debt free! Wonderful. Well done. This is the Ramsey Show. George Camel Ramsey, personality, is my co-host. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Tiana is with us in Evansville, Indiana. Hi, Tiana. How are you? Hi, Dave. I'm well. How are you? Better than we deserve. What's up in your world? Yeah, so I just have a quick question. I was wondering if we can afford to move up in house and whether or not I should allow my mom to move in as well. Okay. Um, (laughs) So what is your payment now? Well, our house payment is $4.58. That's pretty cheap. What's your take-home pay? Yes. Uh, About... 6600 right now. Okay. All right. And do you have other debts? Yes, we do. We have a car for 15k. Mhm. Okay. And so your car payment's bigger than your house payment. Yeah, uh no, actually it's 280. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And what's your household income? Now you said 6600 your take home pay. So your household income's 100 grand. Uh, just not quite. Right now, it's at around um, 
80 to 85K, but I receive SSI from my daughters, and that that's a fixed income. So that's how much I get with no tax. I see. Okay. All right. And um, so, uh, well, we, we tell folks not to have a house payment that's more than a fourth of their take-home pay on a 15-year fixed. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have an awesomely low house payment. Um, so you're just wanting a better house? Why are you wanting to move? Well, our neighborhood is a bit sketchy. It always has been, but we had a plan to pay off our house very early. That's kind of why we moved in in the first place. However, it got pretty dangerous um, when a month ago, someone across the street from us got shot at. And so I don't, I no longer feel safe in the neighborhood. And on top of that, um, with my two disabled daughters, one of them has a lot of equipment that requires a ton of room for her to um, be able to have it with her. So we we just feel like we need a bigger space. All of that was there when you moved in, though, right? Except for the shooting part. Um, well, no. My daughter is only four months old. Oh, okay. And we moved, right, right. We moved in a month before we found out we were even pregnant. Okay. So what could you sell the house for? Maybe... 80, 81. Hmm. What do you owe on it? 70. Okay. So you can barely get out. Right. Okay. So you get out and then you move and your house payment's no more than a fourth of your take-home pay. As long as you do that, that's going to be okay. The trick is you you, you don't want to get in a habit of, and it doesn't sound like you are, that every time no. I want to get a bigger, or every time my income goes up, I go get a bigger house because that just means you stay in debt the rest of your life. So we want to avoid that. But if you make this one move to get away from the shooting gallery and and to get a little more room for the, you know, for the equipment and everything, then... Uh, that doesn't sound out of line. And why do you want your mom to live with you? Well, with my daughters, one has multiple appointments a week that I can't really make now that my other daughter is basically homebound. Um, and I have to be with her literally 24 seven. I, I can't even walk outside without having at least another person with me in case of emergencies. So there's only two people who I am having trained in her care, which is my husband and my mom. And my husband works very long hours during the day. So it would be just a huge help if she was there to help take care of my daughters with me. Okay. And well, your mom yeah. doesn't own anything. She's just going to move into right. your house and right. help you with care. Um, the only downside is, is that someday, you know, the situation is going to change and you're going to, mm-hmm. you know, there'll be some undoing of that. As long as you don't say this is forever and ever until, you know, I'm obligated to do this for the rest of my life. No, I mean, we're, this is what we're doing for this season. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that sounds like a wonderful thing. Your mom's able and willing to do that. And it sounds like you've got a pretty strenuous situation, kiddo. Um, the caveat I'm seeing here is if you sell this house and you've got zero dollars, you might need to pause and save up to have something down on the next house and maybe pay off this car and, you know, kind of solve that situation. So yeah. I'm wondering, could you rent somewhere? You have a, a good income with 6600 Could you rent for a little while maybe while you kind of get some foundation? Two, yeah, a year or two and clean up the car debt and then build up a good down payment. You're right, because you're not going to have a down payment. That, that would give me a little more financial peace, stepping yeah. into this situation. Yeah, I think that's probably, a, that's probably a wise suggestion right there, something to follow. Austin's with us. Austin is in Wisconsin. Hey, Austin, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, fellas, how you guys doing today? Great. How can we help? Hey, so uh, I'm a 28-year-old guy in college, and I just got home from the jewelry store purchasing an engagement ring for hopefully my future fiancé. Yay! Woo! Way to go! Yeah, thank you guys very much. So, uh, obviously, like, I'm a huge fan of the baby steps and everything, and, you know, follow them to a T. However, when talking with her about it, uh, she has one asterisk that she wants to make, and I want to know if this is something I should, you know, raise a stink about, 
or if this is kind of something I should just let fall by the wayside. And that is, uh, so we're both in baby step two right now, um, paying my way through school and everything. And uh, the, my question is, should we put 20% into retirement once we get to baby step four, that's her asterisk, or should I fight about it and make sure that it's 15? Because I really want to pay off the house as soon as we can, but she's you know, looking at the numbers and thinking that we're going to lose out a lot of, you know, like growth and growth and growth and time and everything like that. Yeah. So what is her net worth? So her net worth right now is probably upwards of 50,000. Yeah. Mine's not. No, I, I, I completely agree. <laughs> I, 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 that was I a trick question, agree. Dave. <laughs> Here's so, the thing. If she was so concerned about the power of compound interest, why would she go into debt in the first place? Yeah, that is a fantastic question. Yeah. So you know, I'm, That's a smart aleck answer, Austin, to say um, – you know, if you use your best ideas and your best ideas have gotten you nowhere, you probably should use someone else's best ideas. I that that's kind of my opinion as well. Yeah, and that's that's not a twenty percent versus fifteen percent thing. That's not a caveat or an asterisk thing. That's a philosophy of life thing. And okay. so it's kind of like saying, um, you know, I just hired a personal trainer. He has an eight pack, and I have a keg. And um, I'm going to do everything he says, but this one thing. Well, you can do that. You can do that. But please don't be arrogant enough to say it's because you're smarter than the guy with the eight pack when you have a keg. And then don't blame him when you don't have the eight pack because you didn't follow the plan he set out. Exactly. Because, I mean, he's, he's, got, he's got the plan to get you to where he is, and he's got proof standing in front of you that it works. Now, you can adjust his plan if you want, but it's to your own peril. And tens of millions, literally, tens of millions of people have followed these baby steps. So it really, honestly, it doesn't matter. The 10% versus 20%, all that doesn't matter. What matters is this idea that, um, that, that I'm going to question my personal trainer who's got a track record. You know, that, that, that's, that's the important part of the question. It's not... The, this uh, the nuance of you know it, it did God ordain fifth no he didn't uh, that, that's not the point and, and uh, it's just that the stuff we teach works and so why would you screw with it that's the if thing it ain't broke don't fix it yeah but you know let, let's enjoy being engaged and having a lot of fun and planning a marriage and uh, let's learn to take advice from people who are ahead of us on the journey whichever journey that is whether it's parenting or marriage or career or money that puts us out of the ramsey show in the books do you love a good dave rant want to see the latest ramsey show videos going viral check out your favorite moments from the ramsey show on youtube go watch and subscribe to the ramsey show channel on youtube From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thanks for joining us. George Camel, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Angela is with us in Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Angela. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. How can we help? Yes, sir. About three years ago, my husband and I, we purchased um, a 2019 triple-wide manufactured home. Oh, no. And with, you know, the... Uh, yes. <laughs> and with the you know cost of living and everything else rising, we just found out that to replace our same model, it's $120,000 more than we can get insured for. 
And, you know, we've called around. We've gotten additional quotes that will go up to about 190, but still nothing that would, you know, offset the cost if we had a, you know, a total loss. And we're kind of confused on how we should move forward because we are debt you, you are what? We are pretty much debt free. That's good. Well, um, you're going to have a total loss on this. Over the next 10 years, 15 years, it's going to become worth zero. Okay. They go down in value. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you've got a, you've got some, I, I, I would sell it today. So you, while you can get some money out of it before it goes down in value more every year you wait, it's going to go down in value, not up in value. The home you own yes, should sir. go up in value. Mm-hmm. Triple wides, double wides do not go up in value. Yes. The um the hardest part about that is we do I, I am on family land, which is mine. It's deeded to us and I could sell it, but then we would have somebody we didn't know, you know, right beside us. I do have another acre of land that I could build on, but you know, that's where we were kinda, you know, we're torn. Financially, we want to make the best decision for us because, like I said, you know, we we are almost completely debt free. We only have twelve thousand um, dollar vehicle payment, and we'll be completely debt free. Hmm. Yeah. Well, here, here's the thing. What what would it sell for today? Probably around three, three fifteen. Three hundred fifteen thousand. That counts the ground. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. What's the dirt right. worth? Um, the dirt is probably worth about, uh, I'm probably think 75. Probably worth what? About 75. $75,000. Okay. Yes, so, sir. so you, you think that the trailer itself has a value of 200,000 bucks? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, and so here's the thing. Ten years from now, the two hundred thousand dollars is going to be twenty thousand or forty thousand. Agreed. Yes, sir. Okay. That tells me I have to do something. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is exactly we're going to do, but I'm not going to ride that. Can- I'm not going to ride the horse till it dies. The horse is sick. Yes, sir. And so um, it could be that I sell it without the land under it and move it somewhere, or I buy a little piece of land somewhere, move it to that land, and then sell that package somewhere. Uh, and get it off mm-hmm. the family land, and then build a house on the family land. Eventually, um, it may be it may be that this process takes a year or two, um, but the insurance problem is just highlighting the asset depreciating, losing values problem. It's 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 telling you you can't do the. It's telling you you shouldn't keep it. Right. So, you know, if the family land, uh, who's uh, on the rest of the land? My, my mother. Your brother? Okay. My mother. Oh, my your mom. mother. I see. Okay. Yes, my mother. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what's your household income? Um, about 115000 Very good. Okay. Well, it might take a little time to execute, but one option would be to buy a piece of property somewhere to move this to, move it there, get the septic in, get it hooked up, have a you know a full property there with land and trailer and sell the whole thing. You're probably going to get a lot more for the trailer if you do that than if you just sell it with no dirt under it. Agreed? Correct. Yes. That would correct. be my guess anyway. I fool with these mm-hmm. things over the years a few times in the real estate business, but I'm not an expert on them. But I'm, I think you can. And, and here's the thing. It's very tempting because you're debt free to just sit there. But we have to say out loud over and over again that you're getting ready to lose a lot of money when you do that over a decade, over a period of time. And I would rather you make a shift here now that's painful and very, very inconvenient um, and, you know, end up building you a nice home on there. And even if you took on some a mortgage and you turn and get the mortgage paid off, that kind of thing. But just riding this thing all the way down, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's an option where they hang on to the family land, but they go move into a neighborhood and get a normal house that will appreciate in value. Until you get them. But, but it, it, you can't hang on to the land. You can't leave the trailer there. you got to sell it. Yeah. 
And if you sell it, you're going to sell the property next door to your mama, which is that's hard to do. I mean, yeah. that's very hard to do. That's even more inconvenient than my idea because it's inconvenient family wise. Mm. Um, and it sounds like they would prefer to live there next to her mother, you know, and so forth. So, yeah. Um, so I, I, I just want to see him build. I, wealth. I'm not going to. It's not a panic. But two years from now, I'm not going to be sitting in the same exact place watching this thing go down in value because your net worth is going the wrong direction. And um, and and just because you don't want to face the inconvenience of, of somehow getting rid of this trailer. Yeah. Uh, and, and it is going to be very it's going to be a pain in the butt. And paid for real estate is a big part of the building wealth. Yeah. And keeping but not it. paid for trailers. No, because that's backsliding. Yeah, it's just a large car. Financially, it's a large car you sleep in. Yeah. I mean, they go down in value. It's that simple. Well, and there's a reason the insurance company's not messing with exactly. it. Exactly. Mm. They, they, they're not going to cover it. Jacob is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hey, Jacob, how are you? Hey, doing pretty good. Um, my question is, me and my wife, we're having our first child, and I want to start a new business. We both agreed on an action plan, but... Uh, I kind of wanted to go over the particulars with you and find out, you know, if I might be missing something. Okay, cool. I'll tell you what, we are heading into a commercial break. It sounds like a really important question. I'd like to get the details and give you a proper answer instead of trying to do it in 24 seconds. And so if you'll hang with me, we'll come back to you, Jacob, and uh, George and I will walk through this with you, my brother. This is the Dave Ramsey, or the Ramsey Show. Where did that come from? Oh. gone through financial peace university are chances are it's because someone in your life lit a fire under you mom and dad gave it to you your pastor offered it at your church a friend wouldn't stop talking about it so you finally took the class then when you start working the baby steps they worked and everything's different you changed your entire future well now you can light a fire under someone else uh, you can give someone you care about financial peace university and share the same hope you've discovered with money and with Christmas coming, this is the perfect time to do it. And when you give FPU as a gift, they get more and more and more. Uh, it's, it's more than just the course. You're going to get the premium version of every dollar. You're going to get a group call with our coaching team. Uh, all of this. This Christmas, give the people that you care about a gift that actually matters. It's called hope. It's freedom. Buy Financial Peace University as a gift. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash Give FPU, G I V E F P U. Jacob is with us in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hi, Jacob. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello, hello. We were talking about you guys, and you're thinking about starting a business uh, while you got a baby on the way. So, what do you do for a living now? Uh, right now, I'm in pest control. Okay. What do you make? I make thirty five thousand five hundred a year. Okay. And does your wife work outside the home? Yes, she's a teacher. And what does she make? She makes fifty one thousand nine hundred. Okay. And uh, what kind of business are you thinking of starting? A pest control business. Okay. Which would put you in direct competition with your current employer, so you cannot do it while you're currently working for them right right yes sir how old are you i'm 36 how long you've been doing pest control for four years 
<clears throat> When's the baby due? In seven months. Yeah. But uh, so just a little bit of what's been going on, what we're looking at numbers wise. Um, you know, we only owe on the house and uh, we've got $7,900 in the bank right now. And with our bills and everything by the, I've, you know, ran the numbers for seven months. Um, I'm thinking we could have anywhere from 30 to 31,500 set aside. So that's kind of the reason I was feeling set aside. A when? Confident. Um, by the time the baby gets here. So when are you talking about starting the business? Well, uh, I, Probably like, uh, you know, within the next year, within the next 12 months. Okay. So like five or six months after baby comes. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that makes more sense than now. Right. Uh, wouldn't do it now. Um, okay. I, I, I love the idea of people being in business for themselves that want to be. I, I mm -hmm. believe in small business. I believe in self-employment. I love the idea. I like your hustle. I like your, I like your mentality. Um, what we normally would tell people to do, you don't have this option, is to start your business as a side gig and grow it until it gets almost as big as your main gig. And then when you walk out the door, you don't feel it. But what you're yeah. doing is you're just jumping out of the airplane and sure hoping the shoot, shoot deploys. I see. You know, you got, you're going from uh, 35,000 to zero, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you, you really can't, with good ethics, work on getting customers while you're working for somebody in the same business, right? Right. Have you looked into the startup costs of a pest control business? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have. What, is it, what does the cost look like? Well, I mean, it's really not, I mean, it's not very expensive. It's under $10,000 because all you need is equipment and, um, you know, the licensing and things like that. And you'll need money for marketing, a website. You're going to hire people. Uh, no, like at first I would work by myself. Um, where are you going to get your customers? As far as marketing. Oh, I was thinking either um, like a Google search business um, profile or, um, you know, radio advertising. Which will cost you money. So that's another thing to factor right. into the equation. Uh, there's pest control companies that have been around a lot longer with more money, with more marketing, with more Google history that will show up way before you do. And so I would have a, a really strong plan of attack that doesn't involve trying to sink a whole bunch of money into marketing up front right yeah well also too i mean i'd be hitting the pavement you know um door to door going to, going to businesses yeah going to you know hitting neighborhoods and kind of making sales that way too okay why would i use you versus abc that's been open for 10 years um because i have the experience and I'm going to show the dedication that ABC wouldn't show because they're they're just hiring somebody that's working for minimum wage that's just going to go in and spray real quick, not even do an inspection. I'm going to come in and do an inspection every single time. Okay. What what I just asked you is called your brand differentiator. How is your brand different from your competitors? And you gave a really good answer, by the way. So you need to get that you need to get that narrative down because that's why. That's what people are going to be asking themselves is, um, okay. you know, why are you different? Why would I care? I've got someone that sprays my building now. Why would I change? Right. I mean, you're going to find a few places that have zero pest control, but not many. Most of them, you're going to be asking them to change companies, not start right. from zero, which is good news because they're already spending the money. Uh, they're used to spend the money. You're not trying to get them to spend more money than they're spending now, but you are getting them to change, and change people don't do unless they got a reason, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes. yeah, I, I think you need a big uh, war chest here, 
And uh, I'm going to send you a copy of our book, Entree Leadership, which is how we run business here. We've got a whole brand called Entree Leadership, works with small businesses. We work with a lot of pest control people around the nation, as a matter of fact. Uh, they come to our Entree Leadership conferences. I've met a bunch of them over the years. And so it is a good business to be in. It's a good service you provide. There's a lot of different ways to do it, um, uh, and a lot of things you can do that uh, brand differentiate. I endorse one in one city that uses all natural oh, yeah. chemicals. I uh, hung out with one at, in San Antonio, yeah, long-time San Antonio. advertiser. Yeah. Been, been with me for 15-plus years. We've yeah. been endorsing them there. So uh, it's, it's a great, great idea, great brand differentiator, you know, all natural chemicals. But I, I do my homework and go, what are all the competitors in the area? What are they doing? How are they marketing themselves? How can I stand out in the crowd? What's the pricing structures look like? All of that. You really, really, really need to do your detail. The good news is you got a year to get all that ready before you have to make the jump. The, the scariest part of the whole thing, Jacob, is you're going to go from, you know, making money to zero day one. Because you really can't go lay a foundation under the business in terms of customers or income with integrity while you're working for your, yeah. you know, getting ready to turn your future thing into a competitor. It may be wise to jump into a different kind of sales role where you could start this pest control business on the side take while a, having Take a, a different foundation. job. Exactly. Work in a completely different field That would give me year. some financial peace if I had a new You know baby. what? If you could do something else making 35000 anything – for one year while you do this, um, and then you're not a competitor, and you could begin to build your pest control business a little bit on the side, that's a great idea, George. That excites me. It just makes me less nervous for him. You know, that's that. With a new baby. That's as smart as like Ken Coleman. Good, wow. Good, good in Ken, good I'm in, getting good, on your level. Good buddy. idea. I'm excited really, for him. Really, really good idea. That's cool. I like that. That's the way you do it, Jacob. Because the, th- the biggest thing that's bothering me about this is the zero, Risk. you know, 35 to zero. A lot of risk. Thing. And with a brand new baby. It's a recipe for Sharon stress. would not allow that. It's a recipe for stress. Actually, she would. But yeah. You did it. Yeah, I've done it. Yeah. So there you go. This is the Ramsey Show. Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. John and Valerie are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Good. How We're are great, you? Dave. Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome. Where do y'all live? Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Lancaster. I love it. Love it. Love it. Welcome to Nashville. How much debt have you paid off? Uh, 223000 in just under four years. Good for you. And your range of income during those four years? Um, it started off with about 70000 and that was with two incomes, and then it went to 112000 on one income. Wow. Woo. Nice jump. What do you do for a living? So I am a stay-at-home mom, mm-hmm. and John is a realtor. Ah, okay. Yeah. And real estate business has been better than the old job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it definitely was. So it's funny, Dave, actually, um, I lost my W-2 job, nine to five job um, in 2000. I almost said 2009. In 2019, February of 2019, we were basically both making 35000 40000 a year there. Um, scrambled to figure out the next thing. Got into real estate that summer. Um, you know, tried to basically it was beans and rice for a few months until I started making money in real yeah. estate mm-hmm. from when I lost my job in February to the next June. I think I made about $15,000 in real estate. So Whoa. it was slim pickings there for a little bit. Yeah, but uh, she, and then finally, you know, we were able to finally, when our daughter was born, our second child, she was able to stay home. She worked yeah. to kind of make ends meet for a while. By then, you had gotten it moving, yeah. That's, That's right. Good. What kind of debt was the 223000 All the stupid. Everything. Um, <laughs> mostly John's. Thank you. Um, but obviously, once we got married, I yep. took it on too. But, Look at those um, bus tracks right there. I <laughs> see them. Bump, bump. Yeah. yeah. Um, but credit it cards, was credit student cards, loans, student loans. Car. Yep. And then the house. The house. You paid off your house? Yes, we sir. We did. All right. Woo! 
Hey, look at it weird people. Yes, sir. Yeah. I love it. So what's the house worth? Uh, probably now our house worth about two seventy five, mm-hmm. but we bought it, it was worth uh, we bought it for one sixty five. So we Excellent. owed about one fifty on the time. So actually, um, the man to your right needs a raise. So I actually <laughs> you, John. met George um, last August. I, I have a podcast for realtors, and I was at a conference in Nashville called Podcast Movement. Mm-hmm. Ran into George. He was super kind, like everyone that you employ, super awesome. Uh, talked to me for a little bit. Said, "Oh, I have family in New York. I love Lancaster." Um, and he, I said, "Can you record a quick video to send home to my wife?" It was hilarious. He basically said, "We wish you were here instead of him," which is true. Um, She's the better half. And then he kind of said, you know, talked about his and Whitney's journey and said, I think you guys will pay off your house uh, even faster than you think it was. Our goal was kind of by the time I was 35 and uh, we did it. uh, Yeah. So August I met him and by June it was paid off. So Mm -hmm. So the man needs a raise, Dave. I'm just saying. (laughs) I didn't know I had that kind of power, John. You did. Uh, So not only. It's amazing. He's a prophet. I got you on board. Yeah. And sped up this whole process. Mm-hmm. I yeah. manifested yeah. it. Yeah, and we were on board, so really, like, we got involved from a, through a church, our mm-hmm. church at the time, four years ago. Um, I was not feeling it at first, and then when I wanted to buy a house or buy something, she's like, "Yeah, well, you look at these numbers and tell me how we're going to do that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. We were doing a lot of Dave Ish yeah. at first, and then don't do um, Dave Ish, guys. Stop. Yeah. Stop. It took a little bit to get him on board because <laughs> I always grew up with the budget mm-hmm. and everything like that, but he didn't, and so we learned a lot through our five years of marriage, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, so then once he got on, he was like, he got on, like he was listening to p- the podcast and everything every day at work and everything. I needed a life, really. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he was I a little love obsessed. It. Well, congratulations, <laughs> you, you guys. So How old are you now? 30, 34. 33, 34. <laughs> okay. With a paid-for right. house and so you no did debt. make it. you did make it before 35, That's and the right. house is paid for. Yes, sir. House and everything. You're officially weird people. Yes, Way sir. to go. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. What do you Thank tell people you. the key to getting out of debt is? I think you need you need someone that's going to encourage and mentor you, and you need to be on the same page. I'll give a shout out to a buddy, uh, Vincent Puglisi of mine. He runs a mastermind that I'm in every week. I learn how to grow in my business, grow as a you know person of faith, family through that mentorship, and really I think being on the same page. Like we, yeah. you know, I think the biggest thing that we've kind of learned is you know in 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 the class and we've we've led the class a couple times you know rachel comes on and talks about how oh i'm i'm the spender winston's the saver etc and so i think like having people that are like oh no we don't all like save all our money we want to spend money we want to go to chick-fil-a we want to go to target helps people i mean I, i think like i i needed that you know, freedom to spend some money. And she was willing to say, okay, I think at first you wanted spending money to be like $50 a month. And I thought like $50 a week or yes. like a day. <laughs> so, so the balance of it too. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. Way to go guys. Very, yeah. very, very well done. Excellent. Excellent job. All right. Now you're teaching the class. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Um, budget. Mm-hmm. For one, mm-hmm. uh, follow it to a T, mm-hmm. um, which uh, can be very hard, but mm-hmm. don't give up. Mm-hmm. Um, just keep plugging along. If you mess up, mm-hmm. then it's okay. Grace, there's, Grace, yes, yep. There's another day, and you can just keep going. I think the coolest thing too, Dave, is so I, I sell real estate in Lancaster, right? Like I meet clients and um, they we've been open and honest about our journey the entire time. Um, I mean, we didn't say we're broken. So I mean, June of t- 2020, I thought we were going to lose our house. I had barely sold any any real estate. We asked family if we could move in with them. It wasn't a great situation for them at the time. So, and from there, like we were like, well, then we got to do something about it. Kind of like when like you know we're passionate about you know getting out of debt, um, figuring this out. We thought we'd have to sell our house. And then literally 24 months later in June of 2022, the house was paid off. Mm -hmm. And so I would just encourage you, I mean, we were living off $40,000 for a while. So I think so many people listen to the show and are like, oh, those people are rich. No, that's not true. Mm -mm. You just gotta get on the plan. Maybe you do make $40,000. Okay, so what can you cut in your budget? Um, to make it work. And by the way, I love iPhones. You guys don't need a new iPhone every six months. I'll just go ahead and say that. That hurt, but <laughs> that's true. 
<laughs> Spoken like a true iPhone. I think you can fill in it for is. us if we're out. Yeah, yeah I love this guy. You got the well, podcast down. I remember his go. passion from when we met at the podcast movement. I'm so proud of you guys to see you here today, less than a year later, having done the hard work yeah. and Thank went you. full intensity, not Dave Ish, but all in. Thank it's a game so changer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I think, George, even, I mean, people say all the time on the Facebook channel, like how you'll respond to Instagram messages. You'll reserve, I mean, I know you're busy, but I think like even you being willing to do it. I met a great person on your staff, Jeremy, earlier when we were out in the lobby. People on your staff coming down and meeting people. People, I mean, if you guys, like what you see from Dave, what you see from George on the show is like real life. I've met him. Um, and, and I think like, I think that really says a lot about your organization and the people that you hire. I have told her, I apologize to my in-laws, but it'll be when the kids are adults that I want to come work here when all the babies are grown up. <laughs> come be part of this uh, life-changing stuff you guys teach. That's very awesome. cool. Well, we would love to have you. You're, you're, you're our kind of folks, obviously. Way to go, George. <laughs> Thank you. Who knew it happened? Man, I'm telling you, action. you're you're incredible. Huh? You I never think, know who I you're going to meet. I think we are going to give you a raise. Instead of one beaver pelt, I'm going to give you two. Yes, <laughs> I needed a matching one. This is perfect. <laughs> well, you guys are an inspiration. Call back from an Thank earlier you. hour. Okay. Thank you so well much. Well done, you guys. Very well done. Hey, we've got a copy of Total Money Makeover for you in the Live and Give bundle, along with the uh, the uh, million, the Baby Steps Millionaire's Book, whatever that book's called, <laughs> and the, uh, uh, the Financial Peace University membership. You'll be able to give that to somebody. Obviously, your leading classes, you'll find a deserving person that needs that. So very, very well done. We're proud of you guys. Thank Thank you so much. Great work. All right, bring the kiddos up. Let's introduce some names and ages. So this is Caden. He's three. Mm -hmm. And Liliana is one and a half. All right. He was so excited to meet Dave Ramsey and George. George who? George Camel. George Camel. George the Camel. And Dave who? I love it. Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey. All right. I love it. All right. John and Valerie, Caden and Liliana from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. 223,000. House and everything. Did it in four years, making 70 to 112. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, Three, two, two, one. one. We're We're debt free. Well done. Well done. Man, what a cool couple. Love this. Who says you need a house payment? Not these guys. Not these guys. 34 years old. Mic drop. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Philippians 2, 4, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Booker T. Washington said the happiest people are those who do the most for others. The most miserable are those who do the least. No question about it. You know who the other happy people are? They're the ones that give. Generous people. It's very difficult to find someone who's outrageously generous who's not also outrageously happy. Mm. There's a correlation there. You ever seen anybody that was depressed that was generous? Not that I, I can think of. Doesn't come to mind. Always got a big smile on their face because it's just a lot of fun. So every year we do an annual giving show. We'll be doing it on December 14th in a couple of weeks. If you have a great giving story or receiving story that would inspire others in this whole area of generosity, we need your help. We need to hear your story, and America needs to hear your story, and the world needs to hear your story on this podcast, this YouTube channel, and this radio show. Not necessarily in that order, but there you go. And uh, so, yeah, what do you do? Email us at ask at RamseySolutions.com. The email address is ask at RamseySolutions.com. Put giving in the subject line. Put a little bit about your giving or receiving story and why it's inspiring. Team will get back to you and we will set you up to be a caller to tell your story on December the 14th on our special annual 
Giving Show. Samantha's in Utah. Hi, Samantha. How are you? Great. How are you, Dave? Better than we deserve. What's up? So I'm getting married. Uh, my fiance and I are getting married in three months, and we are trying to combine our finances and households and everything like that. And um, I'm just looking for some advice as to how to do that. Um, I'm in baby step 3B. He is, well, through me, has learned all about your program. Um, he's enrolled in financial Peace University. <laughs> We're taking Financial Peace University as of January, um, Christmas present. And he um, he has some debt. I obviously have parenting off and have a savings. Um, our big question is, is where to live. His, um, uh, his place is um, expiring. The lease is expiring. I'm on a month to month. And we're trying to figure out, do we buy, uh, especially in this market? Or... No. Okay. You're in debt. Okay. You don't buy until you're out of debt and have your emergency fund in place and your down payment. You knew that. Yeah. You're I not mean... in debt, but we are in debt when the, when we have a we. You're not a we yet, but you'll be a we soon. <laughs> Yeah, and um, so one of the big questions we have is also um, we make a pretty good income, and it's something that we can clear up pretty quickly. Good. But wondering, yeah, when when is do we live in a twelve hundred square foot apartment, or do we try to maybe rent something a little bit bigger? Well, how many rooms do you need? How many kids do you guys have? Um, I have three. He has. He has two that are living at home that come to visit usually on on you know during visit times. Okay. So who, who, who's space. living in a twelve hundred square foot? I am. With three kids. Yep. Okay, and that's the month to month, and his lease is expiring and will not renew. I he can renew it. It's just it would be locked in for another year, and um, it's more expensive than mine. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your take home pay? going to be once you're married um we'll have a combined of about 450 a year whoa that's good news sweet yeah i would go i would go rent something else for six months that's nice and that you guys can get settled into and begin to get the um the kinks worked out of the comp the combining of the households you will make a better mm -hmm house purchase decision after you have lived together a while and been married a while than you will from just being engaged. You'll probably buy a different okay. house. You'll probably buy a different house six months after marriage than you would buy before marriage. It's probably true. Um, we were looking at one though, and it looks like that to sort of be able to combine everything together, we're going to jump from about Eleven hundred a month to about three thousand a month. So what? You make, mine... a, you make a half a million dollars a year. So what? Yeah, but I'm a nerd. I know, but it's not. <laughs> and I'm like, you, no, you're, you're not a nerd. So you're, you're a cheap nerd. <laughs> <laughs> My kind of people. <laughs> we love you. We think you're amazing. But yeah, you're you're right. And the point is, though. Okay, I'm not I'm not signing you up for this for ten years. I'm signing you up for six months. Okay. And uh, make sure it's a six month deal. Okay. Don't don't sign a three year lease. I mean, because you're, you know, get in there, get settled, get the kids used to the rhythm of the other ones visiting on the weekends, all this kind of stuff, and the, the flow of bedrooms and the the the. Dynamics. There's a lot of uh, family dynamic that you guys are gonna that that is going to affect your house purchase. Mm -hmm. And when you actually are living in it versus just perceiving how you think it's going to be, it is going to be a little different. It has to be. I don't think anyone could look at it from the outside and know. I know I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, just give, give yourself a little mercy here. But, yeah, I don't think you have to cram into a 1,200-square-footer because it's cheap. And you, but you, with your combined income being so huge, oh, my gosh, y'all are mean, killing we're, it. We're talking like thirty grand at least a month take-home pay. More. I mean, yeah. so you got plenty of wiggle room there, even paying three grand a month for rent. And, again, it's just a temporary thing. And then, yes, go buy you a house by the end of the year. No question. End of 24. Or 23, rather, yeah. not, not, not 22. But, yeah, yeah, that, absolutely. Adele is in Billings, Montana. Hi, Adele. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. Um, a little short on time. My, Go straight uh, to your question. Uh, yeah. So my husband and I are 62. We're totally debt-free. 
We have about one and a half million saved in various like money markets, a brokerage account, you know, with um, Edward Jones. Way to go. And then, yeah. And we um, own a home. And it's um, paid off, and we have it's about worth seven hundred. Okay, so my sister has property of mine in California that she they, she and her husband farm, and they want to buy it for five hundred thousand, but we're not sure if we should keep the property just to diversify and have this property that we get about six thousand a year for six to twelve. Or why, why would we you should take why would you work on a one percent rate of return? I don't know because she's family. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> I, I would not buy a piece of farm property that gave me a one percent rate of return. Well, it's half of your um, net worth, it was, or it's a third of your net worth. Okay, no, I'm not sure. So this was inherited land that's mine, and oh, I'm sorry, I thought you said to, you were going to buy it. No, she wants to buy it because they're the farmers. Oh, for you own it. 000. You own it I for own half it. a million. Uh, yes. Okay. She well, wants to pay me half a million, or should we keep it? That's what we're wondering. Should we hang on to the land the, just for to the for the revenue it's generating? Because it's only generating six to twelve. It's said. not much. Yeah. It's not much. Why would you? Thought, uh, you know, over okay. Time, well, right quick. What would be the reason you would keep it? I have no idea. I don't know if it's just smart to keep something besides money in the bank. No. You, okay. can, you can put a half a million dollars in a lot of different things that does better and that is money in the bank that, that, that you can, can get you your hands on. Can you one thing the, and the, I'll do I, it? <laughs> I think, I, I think the, the only reason I would keep this property if I were you would be just that it means a lot to me emotionally because it's an old family farm. But it's staying in the family if you sell it to her, right? Right, right. It is. How, so, how, five years from now, how much are you going to hate yourself for selling this property? Any at all? None. Sell it. Unless it triples and no, then no, 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 no. I think it. you can buy property that will go up in value faster than that. Okay. I'm not sure it's I'm not okay. sure it's great investment property. I'm not positive it's not, but I'm not sure it is. I think you can make other real estate investments in Montana, for instance. And that, even investing that, that, that if you would take five hundred into that brokerage account, it could generate way more than six yeah. or twelve a year. I'd bring a half million to Billings and invest it around there. In real estate, if you want to own some real estate for investment purposes, but if it if you had half a million dollars sitting on the counter and you didn't own this, you wouldn't go buy it. That, that tells that tells it. you not to keep it. That tells you not to keep it right there. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today.